That was a good little fish. And it came unbuttoned. <laughs> Thought I got snagged for a minute. All right. That was a good little trout. Um, trout signal. Let's get back in there and see if he's got any other friends. You got more friends? Where's your friends at? Yeah, there you go. Little trout sitting right on the back side. Hi, hey, buddy. You were right where you were supposed to be. Nosed in, waiting to ambush. And you got caught slipping. Little male grunt. There we go. Nice little fish. Got him on trout sickle. What? <laughs> Back he goes. All right, not a bad way to start the morning. Came in contact uh, with a couple fish already and got that one boated. And I've only honestly been out here for about 15 or 20 minutes. So uh, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone out there is doing well. And if you're wondering if today is a, uh, a throwback video from February, no, it's not. Today is actually the day after Mother's Day. And I'm wearing my uh, jacket. I still even got my bibs on because we had a cold front hit last night. And it dropped the air temps down into the uh, 50s first thing this morning. So I basically woke up to 54, 55 degrees and the wind was howling out of the northeast. I wanted to fish first thing this morning, but with that wind, there's just no way it was going to be comfortable. So I delayed my start and I'm glad I did because now that I'm out here on the water, uh, it's almost noon. It's beautiful out here. I got a little bit of a wind at my back, but it's perfect. I'm going to actually use that wind to my advantage to set up uh, to work a grass line all the way down. So if you guys can't tell already in the background, I got a big river system behind me. The sound is over that way and I am out in open water. I'm completely exposed. But this is the type of areas you guys want to be fishing this time of year because this is where you can get into some good quality and quantity size fish. So all I'm gonna do, you guys, just work this grass line all the way down. I'm gonna keep the wind at my back as much as I can. That way my, uh, my cast and my line management will be nice and straight. And that's it. We're gonna throw some popping corks. I'm in three feet of water. I got this cork set at about two feet, so there's no sense in even really breaking out a jig head. I got you know every bit of the water column covered with uh, this little guy right here. So I'm just gonna cruise on down. If something looks good, I'm gonna throw the cork in there, click it a couple of times, and let's see if we can keep catching some trout. All right, guys, so when you're fishing like this, you want to really keep your lure tight to that edge. The grass line is actually the structure we're most interested in out here. And it does me no good if I'm 10 or 15 feet off the edge of that grass. So try to keep it up there about two to three feet off the edge, no more than five, because that's where those trout are gonna be patrolling. Redfish too, they're gonna basically just run the edges up and back, up and back, looking for food. So if you keep it over there where they are, you have a better chance. There she is. All right, I don't want to lose her. I want to keep her head down. She's a good one. Got her. And spot locked. There's a good trout. I can keep her on the boat. <laughs> I was counting how many fish I've lost today with this cork. All right, she's settled. I've actually boated four so far, or uh, hooked four, and lost three. This girl right here is actually my first uh, first keeper. Beautiful girl there. She'll probably measure out 16, right about it. Yeah, 15 and a half. Good sized trout. I'll actually uh, keep her. I'm only going to keep a couple. I got the kids all by myself tonight, so might as well keep some for dinner. Pop that in there. Come on down around here. We'll go live well one. And all right, let's get fishing, man. This looks uh, this actually looks really good. I, I didn't even see this little creek that dumped out right there, but boop, that's a textbook spot, guys.
All right, guys, well, I just pulled up on what will be the last spot of the day. I'm kind of running out of time and this wind's starting to pick up anyways. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that popping cork away and I'm gonna go back to fishing some artificial jigs on the bottom. Now, instead of me throwing my normal Daiwa Fuego spinning reel setup, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Now, this is something that I've never done on YouTube before, but I'm gonna throw a bait caster. Uh, now, realistically, this is the second time I will ever have fished with a bait caster. Uh, I grew up fishing spinning reels when I lived in Florida as a kid, pretty much my whole life. I didn't grow up doing freshwater fishing. It was pretty much all saltwater fishing. And after fishing with my buddies that throw bait casters for about the last uh, year, year and a half, it's just made me want to fish with them every time I see them bring, uh, pull them out and fish. The detail and the precision that you can get with a bait caster over a spinning reel definitely had my attention. And I decided the other day, well, let's just go out and let's go get one. So what I have here is a Shimano Corrado. It's a 201 HG. Uh, it's a 7, 4 to 1 gear ratio, and the line pickup on it is about 31 inches. So it's very similar to what I'm already used to throwing with my Diablo Fuegos. And I got it paired up with a TFO Professional. Now this TFO Professional is a medium light, but realistically it feels like a good solid medium. And it's got a lure weight rating of 1 8 to 1 half ounce. So uh, with that lure rating and this fast action tip, it should load perfect with these uh, 3 16 ounce Texas size that I like to throw. So we're going to get the fishing back here. We're going to see if I can uh, snag a, uh, a fish for the first time on YouTube with my brand new bait caster. Hopefully I don't have a giant blowout right here that I can't recover from. But if it happens, it happens. It's kind of the name of the game. So let's get back here. Let's start throwing around this little grass island and see if we can keep pulling some fish. Another tap. Are you there? No. Another tap. They're down there. That's two. Hey. Oh, he is there. <laughs> I was going to say. Sorry, buddy. You messed up. Come on in. There's a couple of you guys over there, huh? Well, baby, go down there with your other friend. All right, guys, and on that note, I gotta get out of here. I'm running out of time. I uh, wish I had a little bit longer to fish, but unfortunately, three and a half hours was it due to the, uh, the weather and me having to go get my kids from daycare. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, what I'm gonna do though, instead of just ending it here, is I'm gonna take you over to last week's footage. Uh, you guys, last week I didn't put a video out as you probably know already because uh, I had some GoPro camera issues. I caught uh, some nice fish on a nice trip in Savannah, uh, but the camera kept shutting off and it wasn't recording for whatever reason. So I was able to capture some really cool flounder footage, uh, the very, very specific way of catching these fish, which is really neat to me. Uh, so I'll go ahead and cut to that footage. And as always, thanks for the support guys. Got her. That is a flounder. Yes, dude. Let's go. <laughs> Be a good flounder. It is a good flounder. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, don't lose her in the boat. Let's get a net. Yes. There's another one over there too. There's a couple flounder right in here, guys. Look at this girl. Let me spot lock right here. Boop. I got something else crashing right there that looked like a flounder. Yes, let's go. Bang. How about that? Here's a beauty. I already know she's legal. Let's just get a measurement on her. Hi, right, dinner. Zeroed out. That is almost 18 inches. Heck yeah. Well, I'm in shallow here. It's only like two and a half feet. Come on, come on, 
Come on. I think there's a couple of you girls over here, huh? All right. Look at that. That hook fell out. All right. Let's put her in there. We'll get a little bit of water in there. Live well one. There we go. Rinse our hands. I tell you told you I saw a flounder now that wasn't the one I saw that came out of the water but I hooked her and then I saw another one of her friends right over here so uh, I may have found a little flounder spot there she is again that is definitely a flounder I saw her white belly let's get in here and see if we can grab another one that's right where she was yes yes that's definitely another one I <laughs> watched you come out of the water. What's up with these flounder, man? These flounder are all going airborne. Oh, you gonna come back in? Yep, come back in. Boy, I watched her blow up on some bait up there. And then I got her. You ain't very big. You gotta be 12 in Georgia. I don't think you're gonna make the cut there, little small fry. Yeah, 12 and a half. She got any meat on her? Nah, we'll let her go back. I'd like for them to be a little bit bigger than this, but not a bad fish, guys. You can honestly take this girl right here, scale her down, score her, put some flour on it, pan fry her whole. She's actually pretty, pretty thick, but you know what? We'll let her go to fight another day.